Hello and welcome to ProjectWise Administrator Fundamentals Accreditation Course. ProjectWise Environment. In the previous lesson, we saw how documents can be created with special naming convention. We saw how attributes can be assigned to documents and title blocks can be updated from document attributes. It is all possible because there is an environment assigned to documents. So in this lesson, we will learn how to create a project-wise environment with the relevant attributes. We will also learn how to assign the environment to the folder so that documents within will be able to make use of those environment attributes. To create and define environment attributes, it must be performed by project-wise administrators and to log into the data source via the project-wise administrator module. We can go to the environments node and here we can see multiple environments do exist in ProjectWise. However, documents from the same folder can only assign to a single environment. To create a new environment, we can right mouse click New Environment. Let's go ahead and click Next. Give it a name, for example, My Company. Environment name and the description can be anything and it also can contain spaces and special characters such as the tilde symbol. However, this environment name will eventually be used to create the database table with the same name, which some characters are not allowed for a database table. Let's go ahead and click next. A table name cannot have spaces, so it will convert any spaces to underscore. If we continue to go to the next few screens, we are not going to be able to create the table because of the character tilde. So let's go back to the previous screen and make sure we give the environment a proper name. Let's go ahead and click next. This will create a table in the database with the table name, my company. Let's go ahead and click next. The sort of attribute information that we want to associate to the document, we can add it here. So let's go ahead and click on the add button. The first attribute we want to add to the environment is project ID. From the drop down list, select varchar, length 11 characters. This attribute can store string data and a maximum of 11 characters. Attribute names also get created in the database table. So the same rule applies, which doesn't allow some special characters and cannot contain spaces in the attribute name. Let's go ahead and click on add. The next attribute that we are going to add is called area. And it is also a varchar, but this time it's going to be eight characters. Let's go ahead and click add. The exercise that we will need to accomplish in this lesson is to create an environment called my company with the attributes already listed on this slide. The data type for the attributes will be mainly varchar and the maximum number of characters for each attribute is also listed next to the attribute name. Instead of assigning data type of varchars to ref date and drawn date, the date data type can also be used to assign to these two attributes as well. But be mindful if the date data type is being used, ProjectWise will make sure that users will need to enter the correct date format. Otherwise, it will constantly display errors if users input non-date information. On the other hand, if ref date and drawn date attributes have been assigned with varchar data type, then users cannot search documents based on a calendar date. For example, return documents that were drawn between two calendar dates. Now that the attributes that we need to associate to the documents are listed here, we can go ahead and click on the next button. Since there are multiple environments that can exist in ProjectWise, do we want this environment that we are creating to be the default selection when users create folders? If yes, we can enable this option. Otherwise, we can leave it unchecked. If we enable this option, each time a document is created, a record will be added to this environment table, even if users have not populated any attribute data yet. It is okay to leave this as unchecked for now. And there could be some occasions where we do need this option to be enabled. Let's go ahead and click next. Click finish for the environment to be created. Here we see the environment is being created 
along with the attributes that we defined earlier. There are shortcomings that we may want to know ahead of time. The attributes cannot be renamed. The data type and the number of characters that we chose for each attribute cannot be changed either in this project-wise administrator interface. However, we can extend the maximum number of characters for the attributes using project-wise PowerShell commandlets. If we no longer need the attribute from the environment, we can delete it. However, be warned, the data that is associated with that attribute will also be dismissed as well once we delete the attribute. So just be careful when we are deleting attribute from the environment. Let's go ahead and click no. If there are missing attributes that we wish to add, we can simply right mouse click on attributes, new attribute. Another shortcoming that we may notice is that once an environment has been created, it's actually hard to find out useful information about the attributes, such as its data type and the maximum number of characters allowed for the attribute. Here's a trick. We can right mouse click on the environment and select export, give it a name. This will create an environment definition file it is just a text file and we can open it with any program such as Notepad++. Here we can see the definition of the attribute. For example, project ID has a varchar of 11 characters. We can also use the same method export and import to bring environment from one project-wise data source to another project-wise data source. Now that the My Company environment has been created with the attributes defined, let's see how users can make use of it. Documents that require the attributes we just create, we can select the folder and open the Properties dialog window. Go to the Environment dropdown and select My Company. It is just that easy. Documents within the same folder will be able to utilize the My Company environment attributes. Let's go ahead and click OK. We can also do the same as well when creating new folder. Environment does get inherited into the new subfolders that we will be creating. However, when we assign an environment to a folder, it does not inherit into the existing subfolders. This is why it is important to create the environment way ahead of time prior bringing in the entire folder structure. If we consider utilizing the environment even at the subfolders level as well. Now that the environment my company has been assigned to the drawings folder, let's take a look at one of the documents from the drawings folder by opening the document properties dialog window. We can confirm that this document is indeed utilizing the My Company environment. Let's go to the attributes tab. There are no attributes to be found and nowhere for users to populate the attributes that we defined earlier in the administrator module. We will need to proceed to the next lesson to see how we can bring these attributes onto the dialog window for users to input the data. During this lesson, we have learned how to create a new project-wise environment as well as defining the required attributes for the documents. We also learn how to assign an environment to a folder. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.